Hello, viewers. Today I have Mr. Ajumbe Mokigon, an honorable MLA from Pandari, constituency from Waka District. And since he won the election in his fourth attempt, uh, it, this is going to be our first time to have a conversation with him. So there are many issues and there are many things on our mind to have a short discussion. But the most important thing would be how he won the general, I mean, the Nagaland Assembly election last time, about this time in, in 2023. He has attempted for the last uh, three times and he is winning this election in his fourth attempt. So for whoever thinks that um, life is unfair, he's an icon, he's an example for you know, never giving up your dreams and never giving up on your mission. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ajumbe Mokikon, for your time for this conversation. Yes. And this came as a very um, you know, inspiring, at the same time, very shocking um, surprise that after your third even after your third attempt you were not able to make it but for in your in in your fourth attempt you came out with flying color i think and the fact is that you were not supported by any political netas and you don't have any backing from big people big shots you come from a humble family background as far as i understand you come from a political party which seems to be declining mm. but you were able to defeat you know one let's say, giant figure in the party now as a national spokesperson at Mohnu Mokikon. How, did you, how would you like to describe that? How did that happen and why did that happen? Well, uh, you see, this today happens to be, you know, um, one year, 12 days after the election. Mm. The state election in Nagaland was held on the 27th of uh, February mm. last year. So if we count from the day the election was uh, was held, it's already 112 days. Yeah. And um, by the grace of God the Almighty, and uh, with the, you know, consistent support mm -hmm. from my people, especially the 40 Pantri Assembly constituency, mm. this time, yes, uh, after a lot of struggle, I could manage to win. And um, I beg to differ with you when you said uh, an NBF a party seems to be declining. No. Okay. Yeah, please. <laughs> no. This party is a very strong party. Okay. Uh, you know, even though we have uh, only two MLAs this time, mm. but um, it has stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. This party represents the, you know, the sentiments and the personality of the Naga people, actually. And you're also aware that um, it's spread across the length and breadth of the Naga areas, mm -hmm. not only the state of Nagaland. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, five uh, MLAs in the state of Manipur with one MB, the outer mm -hmm. Manipur parliamentary constituency. And uh, we have two ministers uh, amongst the five MLAs in the state of Manipur. Mm -hmm. We also have party establishment in our national Pradesh, the Naga areas. So um, uh, this party is uh, never declining. Mm, okay. Uh, you know, uh -huh. uh, it, it'll go. It'll grow strength from strength to strength. Mm. And I'm proud to be a part of this party. Mm. And uh, my constituency is one constituency, actually uh, a regional bastion, uh, where uh, you know people laugh to vote for regional party. Mm. And uh, uh, you know the. The way I have fought the past three elections, it was just a you know a very trying moment for me. Mm -hmm. But um, in life, you need to face both uh, winning as well as defeat. And uh, I have no regret, even though I have lost the past three elections. I know that my people have not left me mm -hmm. uh, with my limited resources and uh, the background that I have come from. Mm -hmm. People know that. Uh, I see. I am not from a, a political, you know, very rich, influential black, uh, background, but uh, they trust in my leadership and they know that I will not fail them. And mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to my people, especially the 40 Pandre Assembly constituency for electing me this time. Mm. So what did you think when you, you, you didn't get elected for the third time? That's a span of 15 years. Right. Like if you get married and have children, they all 
have become like adolescents. <laughs> ah, well, you are correct. <laughs> My daughter has appeared class 10 this Before year. Before you contested. The, the year I contested, okay. she was born. She was born, know? now she is 12 class. <laughs> She's, uh, no, yeah. she, she has appeared class 10. Oh, okay. So that was 2017 she was born. No, 2000, 2000, 2007. 2008. 8, okay. 2008, um, 4th uh, January. 4th okay. January. Wow. So election was sometime in the last part of February. Yeah, yeah. So my daughter appeared class 10 this year. I'm expecting her that she will get a good result. Mm. Oh. Uh, yes, 15 years is a long, uh, you know, long, journey. A long years. Yeah, uh, yeah. Living in a failure yeah. <laughs> life. <laughs> people, uh, you know, it's so difficult. Okay, to, I know. Uh, withstand mm. lots of temptations, mm. lots of, uh, you know, hurdles. Mm. But uh, I know that God is always with me. Mm. And I trust in God. Okay. Not only that, my people, despite of so many hurdles, they didn't they didn't leave me. So, uh, as, as that, far, that, one, yeah. that is my strength. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, That's your, but people are a strength yeah, in exactly, God plus exactly, God. Exactly. Okay, but people know that you know you are not from such and such background, mm. and they are not never gonna get the benefits that they expect, like from the rich rich people. Let's say for now. Mm. But what was one thing that inspired people to vote for you? Well, uh, you know, they, they know that um, I'm a man with principle. Okay. And um, uh, they know that I'm also a man who is not greedy. Because if you want to be greedy, long run, sky is the only limit. Yeah. And therefore, um, one should not into, you know, in, uh, go into greediness. Okay. And the, my people are aware of this. Mm. They know uh, my personality, my way of life, and my target. And they know that I never give up. I have uh, served the Naga people in the in the form of President uh, Naga Students Federation also, and some other you know, in in some other capacities even prior to becoming the president of NSF. Mm-hmm. So um, not only my people, I think the at least the uh, major chunk of the Naga people knows my character as well as uh, my principle. Mm. And uh, this is one aspect which I would like to convey. To the younger generation, that um, you have to be consistent in your effort, but not not only consistent will not help you. It has to be, you know, uh, uh, you have to have the principle with you. Then people will follow. Mm. Uh, the hardship in life it is never ending. Yeah, it continues. So part of life. Uh, that should not uh, deter you in achieving the target that you have set. Mm. Well and good. However, during the time of election, there was a news definitely trained maybe that somehow tarnished your image as well, that your supporters violently hurt mm. the supporters of your other contending candidate. Mm. So how did, that, how did that happen and how true was that? Because we saw some videos going viral that this, this is what has happened, you know, instigated oh, okay, by... Okay, okay. Yeah. That, 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 uh... I'll answer you. See, um, in the past three elections, uh, you know, my people were so tolerant. Tolerant in a sense that even though there were a lot of, um, you know, accusations, uh, you know, uh, in terms of um, labeling uh, false accusations also, even using some physical force, <coughs> and so on and so forth. But my people were so tolerant, we didn't want to respond. This time round, the same strategy was intensified mm-hmm. to crush my supporters during the process of electioneering. Mm-hmm. And uh, we responded befittingly that uh, we, we are not going to succumb to this kind of threat anymore. And uh, uh, what we have done was only you know, asserting our rights, defending uh, our people only. Because my voters were disallowed, they were denied entry into the polling station. So and that's that that's how we were, you know, compelled mm-hmm. to respond according to the demand of the situation. Mm-hmm. We didn't provoke the situation, we didn't do any violent thing, but uh, it was only an assertion assertion of our rights mm-hmm. and the you know the 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 right to exercise our franchise, the mm-hmm. franchise of my voters. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I think these are unfounded allegations that we re- we resort to violence. No. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, my supporters were badly treated. 
uh, only by the you know uh, intervention of uh, the Almighty God, the divine intervention that no why no untoward incident happened. Mm. But uh, somehow we could manage. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened, it was mm. unfortunate. Correct. Yeah, mm. sad to see that mm. such incidents on election days. So I think people should, wh- whichever whoever it is, but people should uh, you know try to Absolutely. avoid violence Absolutely. as much as possible Absolutely. or unfair means of. Absolutely. Put capturing or controlling. Correct. So now the Lok Sabha election is up. You know, does your party have anyone in mind, or does your party have the capacity now to go against or you well, know, challenge? Well, uh, you see, um, as of today, mm. we are supporting the government of the day here in the state of Nagaland. Um, although only two of us, we have already extended our support to the present government led by our, our Honorable CM, Mr. Nipiryu. Mm. And therefore, uh, uh, you know, uh, we don't want to take any uni- unilateral decision. A working committee of the party is uh, actually the, the right forum to decide which, whether we should put up a candidate or we should support any other political party. And uh, at the right time, we are having this conversation. Tomorrow is uh, actually a meeting fixed okay. for the working committee. I see. The party will decide. Uh, unless the party decides, uh, I have no authority to you know, yeah. uh, speak on that. Mm. But uh, hopefully, we will arrive to a, a decision which will be acceptable to all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, you are right. At the moment, uh, somehow we are you know, uh, not effective as before yeah. because of the fact that we have only two MLAs mm. and therefore with that strength uh, we will have to think twice thrice whether we will set up a candidate mm. but definitely the working committee's meeting tomorrow mm. will come up with a certain resolution mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken you must be I mean regarding your age you must be late in the in your late 40s or early 50s well, late late forties, correct. Late forties. Yes, yes. So you are very young, you know, like compared to the seasoned other politicians. They are like sixties in their seventies. Even our chief minister must be definitely in his seventies. Yes. Yeah. He, so he has crossed seventy, I guess. You have a you still have a long political career to pursue on. Mm. So, what people would love to know, as well as myself, would be what is your vision for the Nagas, and what is your vision for your district as well as for your constituency? I think these are very important questions that people should also learn about well, their Ronglen, leaders. You know, um, some questions uh, have to be answered in action. Mm-hmm. Some questions have no answer, okay? Okay. But of course, some questions have direct answers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, one must know this. Okay. Um, as far as my future plans are concerned, um, It'll be too early to state everything what I have in mind. Mm. But uh, I would definitely tell you that um, as far as I'm concerned, as a politician, you know, uh, the Nagas, especially the younger generation, have lost all respect to the politicians. Very true. I agree with that. And I wanted to regain this, that, Politicians are someone, some people, who, repre- who, who represents you, who represents our people. Yeah. And, uh, of course, I do agree that there are lots of lapses on the part of the politicians, the leaders also. But um, I think Naga people also should realize that these are the people who represents you, who represents us. And therefore... Um, on my part, what I'm attempting to do at the moment is to regain that respect. Mm. We must uh, earn that respect from our people again as a politician. And how do we do that? We also need to minimize the you know, quantum of corruption Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. As, as a leader. Mm. But if I asked you a question, whether you have an answer, who starts, from where do we start corruption? It's is this starting from the podium? Or from the top. Yeah. It's a bottomless pit. It has no answer. I don't know whether yeah. you have any it's like <laughs> ready-made <who>? answer. <laughs> that. But that is the point. Now, yeah. I, I'm going to talk about the election. Mm. If you go to election, uh, you know, there are people, voters, asking money in exchange of their votes. 
Well, how, so yeah. That's why I'm pointing out where do we, where is it starting the, the corruption? Mm. From the bottom or from the top? Mm. The, the very fact that you are selling your vote itself is a corruption. Mm. So you are indirectly encouraging your leader to resort into corruption and come back to the nec- uh, for the next election and, you know, you'll uh, buy votes. Yeah. So this, if we are to... Uh, you know, uh, reduce the quantum of uh, corruption. We have to, the grassroots itself, mm-hmm. have to change its mindset mm-hmm. in the well approaching election. This is uh, one aspect which I have been very, uh, you know, passionately talking in almost all the occasions wherever I go and speak. As far as the, your questions relating to the future is concerned, it only God knows. My only target at the moment is we have been elected for five years period uh, as far as the present system is concerned. You can't go more than that. Once yeah. you attend that five years, you have to go back to the people and, uh, you know, yeah. uh, taste the water. Yeah. So uh, if, if my activities, my, you know, <coughs> uh, developmental works, my reaching out to my people has... Uh, if it is satisfying, mm. uh, well, definitely people will vote me back. Mm. But uh, uh, only on the strength of uh, someone else with money power, I think this kind of uh, uh, activities in the election, we must now, uh, you know, uh, cleanse all this. Mm. And uh, let us see how people will respond. Mm. But uh, for the Naga people, one thing which is in my mind, which is very dear to me, is the Naga political issue, which uh, I have been, you know, without uh, All your life. any hesitation, I have been talking both inside as well as outside the house. <coughs> and this is one issue uh, which we must resolve it honorably, mm-hmm. because unless this is resolved, yeah. Naga people uh, have a very limited scope in excelling in any any you know, activities as well as the talent that you possess, I agree can be uh, you know exhibited mm. in the in the eyes of the world. Mm. Mm. That's true. That's true. Okay, so how challenging it is to be an MLA member of Legislative Assembly, representing thousands of people from your constituency, but not in the ruling. Last time you also raised even the sal- issue on salary. Uh, right, the uh, salary of correct, an MLA, correct. which ah, yes. is like quite minimal, mm, mm. but you need to feed thousands of mouths. Ah, yes, yes. How challenging it is now. You have, as a fresher in the mm. legislative assembly, you have to tell us how challenging it is. You are right. You are right. Absolutely, I have raised all this concern. Mm. The um, local area development uh, program, as well as the salary of the elected members. I'm grateful uh, this time the honourable CM, who is also in charge of the. Uh, you know, finance have enhanced uh, the salary and allowances of the member of the Legislative Assembly this time, as well as even the local area development program. Mm -hmm. So that will uh, definitely, you know, ease a lot of our tension Mm -hmm. because, uh, you see, for an elected member like me who has no assignment uh, and to take care of uh, 26,000, 27,000 voters, having about uh, 80 plus villages in my Pandari Assembly constituency. Uh, with that meager limited salaries and LATP, it is so difficult. It is, it is, as you have correctly used the word challenging, it is quite challenging. Mm. And uh, it's, it's, it's really a herculean task, you know, I can imagine. to take care of uh, our, our people that, yeah. in that way. So uh, even though I have lots of things in my mind to do, to do good for our people, for my people, especially the Pandari Assembly constituency. It is so difficult with that uh, you know, a small amount. So uh, hopefully with now it's only one year. Yeah. We have already completed one year. True. Uh, another four years to go. So whatever uh, the government intends to provide to the Assembly constituencies, uh, we are looking forward to, you know, uh, to do more of developmental activities, mm-hmm. although even though it's a very limited resources, I wanted to use it judiciously, mm, true. and uh, people will be the, le- the the best judge as and when mm. we uh, go and face the election. Mm. 
like you express, it's very, very difficult. It's so challenging to manage with that amount of money, which is well acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Don't you, do you fear? Do you fear or do you foresee people, you know, backlashing you in the next election for not being able to help them as they expected? Or how is the nature of the reaction? I mean, by it's completed one year. By this right. time, you must have yes. at least got a hint that this is now how people are reacting. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Please share that experience. Well, uh, yes, definitely. There are people who, uh, you know, expect money, mm. uh, even if even though we do a lot of de- developmental activities. Mm. But uh, that that uh, that doesn't, you know, that should not deter us mm. in doing mm. developmental works. Mm. We, I will, we will continue to do that. I, especially on my part, I will continue to do that. And uh, once we reach out to the people with developmental activities, I am pretty sure mm. that the mindset of my people also will change, mm. and the the you know number of uh, you know population that are seeking a monetary benefits during I mean short term monetary benefits during election will be drastically reduced by seeing the developmental activities that I'll be doing the remaining. Another four years. Mm. I wanted to change the you know the the landscape, the minds, the the, the, the mindset na- of my people. The nature of electoral politics. Exactly. Like so how we vote. If, mm. if we do developmental activities, uh, people will change, and uh, and I mean I mean I'm I'm, I'm anticipating that they'll, that out, <coughs> that outlook, mm-hmm. that um, mindset will be changed, and therefore, the expenditure that we anticipate. Mm should reduce to mm. my mind it should mm. reduce yes and uh, not only me all of us the elected members should should do their part and uh, see that our people uh, don't resort to asking money mm. Mm. only ask for development mm. this is one aspect which we all must emphasize absolutely that's the ideal way of you know having an elected leadership absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely now you have your previous contender Monlumokikon. after you get elected have you ever met, have you ever you know come close to each other or maybe you know in an event or in personal level on mm-hmm. personal level i mean do you what do you know about this person like uh, well, as as a political rival <laughs> well <laughs> it'll not be very feared <laughs> uh talk of you know yeah. uh, someone uh, whom we contested each other right. or um, you know uh, I mean uh, it, it is it is uh, best to remain silent on the person, uh, mm-hmm. personal life of each other mm-hmm. well uh, I have a lot of respect for him mm. uh, not only him but those who have whom we have contested each other mm-hmm. They also have concern for uh, my people, and therefore they have mm. uh, been into the fray. Mm. So, well, even if there is some uh, variation of uh, you know approach in our election uh, uh, system as well as in our opinion, uh, that is uh, all due to a different issue. Mm. But uh, as far as the uh, life of a person, personality or uh, personal life is concerned, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Better, uh, you know, leave it as it is. Leave so it as <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to entangle myself there. <laughs> I know, but I of know. course, we have come, uh, we have been meeting in some occasions. Okay. Just uh, having a light, uh, you know. Yeah, chit-chatting. Yeah, pleasantry yeah. Yeah. exchange. Yeah, that's like what that. I wanted to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah. okay. Yeah. No, cool. no ill feeling as such. It's a contest. Politics one, is not personal. One mm. should accept, you know, winning happily mm. and also a defeat gracefully. True, and you have been doing that for the last ah, yes, three times. I've been doing that. I've been doing that. Mm. Mm. I I admire I admire such determination of like because when nagas especially when we do business in two months we give up. Ah, this this business is so tiring. It's not going to work. No, we should but, not do that. Yeah, we should not absolutely. Do that. Mm. Now NBF party, like as you claimed, it's it's not declining in other states. Well and good, but in the case of Nagaland, mm. the fact is that it you it, it it's not anymore glamorous as it used to be mm. so what is your strategy to revive a original party like this because at the end of the day original party becomes a party that protects our rights Correct. so what's your plan well uh, I hold a very important position in the party 
the secretary general of the party, not only an MLA. And therefore, I am uh, uh, you know, equally responsible in bringing the party back to its uh, you know, form. In a sense that uh, it, should, it was a very powerful party. It is still a very powerful party, but mm. it should uh, be more powerful. Because as I said, I'm repeating at the risk of uh, repeating it, that it represents the personality and the sentiment of our people, this mm. party itself. Mm. In fact, those who are not a part of this party also keep telling us that uh, no matter what, NBF is one of the best party. Mm. You know, this mm. is uh, either in a serious mode or in a joking mode, everybody accepts this reality. Mm. And uh, it is true to mm. a large extent. Mm. Uh, yes, the party has, uh, has a lot of plan. We need to reach out to the grassroots once again. Uh, we have the party establishment from the central office, Kohima, down to the state unit. State unit means the state of Manipur, Arunachal. And also the divisions means the districts and to the assembly segments. So and, and to the village itself, we have a proper party set up, even though we don't have an elected member in on almost all the constituencies many of the constituencies, but still then the party establishment is still intact. And uh, we will definitely, you know, chuck down some uh, programs and policies to you know, revive the party again. And uh, one thing which uh, I would like to, you know, uh, convey through your uh, channel is to appeal to those, uh, our leaders, you know, belonging to the different political party, to, uh, you know, work along with NPF. In fact, many of the leaders today are uh, ex-NPF only. Yeah. All are NPF actually. Yeah. So I would like to call them back mm. and uh, we would definitely, we are definitely looking forward to work together with them once again mm. for the better men and for the good of our people. Mm. Now you have a lot of hope that the party will be revived and it still has stands a chance for revi revival of the party. You are welcoming, or, you know, extending an olive branch for your other ex NBF party members. Correct, correct. So, but unless, until and unless they are your, you know, leadership paves way for them to be part of a leadership team because it's a leadership crisis in a way. Because if they come back more senior, and they would definitely like love to kick the bigger, you know, piece of the cake mm -hmm. in the party. Mm -hmm. So, do you think there can be adjustment in your party when they come back? Well, that's not an issue. Really. Exactly. I find when, that as the most big, no, you know, no, biggest no. issue. As far as um, the present team is concerned, we have a new team. Yeah. Our party had a general convention on the 21st of October last year. Yes. And uh, we have a new uh, president also in the person of Apung Bongoner as mm -hmm. a president. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, almost all the seniors have been retained. Uh, but uh, once we decide to come together, uh, you know, paving way or having some adjustment, accommodating each other, mm. that should not stand on, the, that, should, that should not be an issue. Okay. That can be sorted out. It's, it's not a difficult issue. It will be sorted out. Mm. That is nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Correct. Because in politics, leadership plays the most important role. And yes. If your party welcomes them with an open heart that, you know, we can accommodate, well, we, we can we reshuffle. Will we will sit like this, face yeah. to face, mm. talk and sort it out. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, that's not a big deal. That can be worked out. Okay, wonderful. I mean, so now four years to go. One year completed as, you, as, as, as far your, as this tenure is concerned. Yeah, this tenure is concerned. Yes. What are few things that you would like to focus as a member of the Legislative Assembly as well as for your constituents? Well, uh, first of all, my constituency, uh, we have this uh, subdivisional planning and development board. We call it this. Uh, this government was gracious enough to grant that to Pandari uh, status, which is actually, you know, a little like a mini district type. Mm. So um, with that, every month we used to have meeting uh, regularly, and I used to be, you know, attending. I keep attending the meeting almost every month. Now, what I'm emphasizing is, I have been telling my people that, especially the officers' post is there that we have to give our best for our people. Mm. And the one, uh, there are some areas where we have uh, decided to concentrate is on the school education, improving the, impro improving the school, uh, you know, the education, education sector. 
the road sector, mm. you know, the health sector. Very important. There are many uh, sectors, but these three are very yeah. important uh, point that we have picked up, and uh, we are concentrating on these three. Uh, as an elected uh, member, as an MLA, uh, well, my my you know powers and functions are very limited, of course, yeah. because I have no authority with me. Mm. So therefore, I can only do something uh, for my constituency at the moment. All over Nagaland, unless I have an, I have a portfolio. I cannot, uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, I, I mean, I have no authority to, to, to reach out to the rest of the yeah, yeah. states, rest of the rest of the districts. So I can only concentrate in my constituency, and I'm doing that. Uh, you, you can ask some of my people how much I have done within one year. Mm. That mm. also you can you can reevaluate. You can evaluate, reevaluate it. How mm. much I have done, and do my, I mean, the, in my do my mind, I have done the, whatever I could. And I've done a lot mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. during this span of one year. Mm-hmm. As far as the Nag- uh, Nagas Nagaland as a whole is concerned, well, uh, as I said, there are lots of things to be done in terms of development. Uh, as far as Nagaland state is also concerned, government of the day is also trying their best. Uh, we have to do a lot still. Uh, the Nagas as a whole, my one and uh, very uh, dear to my heart is a Naga political issue. True. I keep raising this uh, uh, because uh, I'm serious on this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm aware that the uh, Nagas want a solution which uh, should be honorable, acceptable, and inclusive for all of us. Mm-hmm. These are something which I still have in mind. Mm. Amazing. The last question would be, what's your thought on free scrapping of free movement regime? The Even the assembly uh, yes, adopted yes. a resolution on this. This, you see, our people were divided without our consent, mm. without our knowledge, without telling us. First by the British and then by the government of India. Mm. Now, when this was uh, proposed, uh, I was actually very extremely provoked. And therefore, I've spoken uh, my mind in the House also, within mm. the Nagaland Legislative Assembly. Recently, right? Recently. Even openly also, I have spoken. And uh, the government, the, the 14th House, this is the 14th House, we have outrightly rejected that proposal by appealing to the government of India to, uh, you know, uh, to reconsider their decision. This is a policy which will further divide the Naga people, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And therefore, we should never subscribe, agree to this kind of uh, ideas because even international law, you call it um, indigenous people's rights, Mm -hmm. the General Assembly have also passed a resolution which has been, that instrument has been ratified by almost 146 nations. nations. And India is a signatory to that instrument. Okay. No, and therefore, you, you know, they also need to respect what they have signed. Mm, absolutely. It's, it's about giving uh, rights to the indigenous people. Mm. Secondly, government, government of India talks about look east and act east policy. Mm. From look east, now they have now jumped into act east policy. Now, if you are talking of uh, fencing the border, then the, uh, aren't you contradicting what you are propagating? Mm-hmm. This question has to be put across to the government of India. Another point is about the Naga people, especially the Naga people. If you go to uh, Noglak area in Kemongyan region, the leaf, the so-called the artificial boundary this side, Indian side, whereas their fields are all located uh, the so-called uh, beyond the border, international so-called international border. They used to go and cultivate towards Burma that, side. That's a fact. Uh, how do you how do you fence that those uh, you know uh, the the paddy fields, the mm-hmm. juming, mm-hmm. all this? Then go to the Gonyak areas, yeah. the Longwa Longwa yeah. village is a classic example mm-hmm. where. The Ang houses divided into two. If there is a joke that mm. the um, Ang sleeps in Burma, <laughs> eats in India, mm. and uh, and it is it's it's a fact because yeah, yeah. his house, the man gate. If you if you see his man gate, the, his house, the Ang house in Longwa, 
you will see the Burmese flag on the left, What's that? Indian flag on the right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This, is, uh, this is how it was pasted. So how do you, f- how do you divide that, that same house into two nations? Mm-hmm. This, uh, this kind of, I don't know, this kind of logic, from where do they develop this kind of logic? Mm-hmm. So therefore, as far as uh, we are concerned, we should not allow, rather, I was insisting that instead of further dividing the Naga people, we should again pass a resolution reaffirming integration of the Naga areas. Mm-hmm. That was what I was actually emphasizing. Mm. And uh, the, the House, have, of course, adopted the resolution uh, For to, the to appeal to the government of India. Regarding uh, to FMR? Uh, the, the free movement regime should yeah. not be. Imposed. Uh, imposed. It should not be scrapped. Mm. Yeah. It should not be scrapped. Mm. But you even proposed for integration of the Naga correct, areas. Correct, but correct. that was not taken into account. Well, uh, the government of the day would, of, of course, I hope, will consider it the right time. Mm. The mm. right time. Okay. So the mood of. They must be looking for the right time. Okay. Mm. So that means definitely when, as, as and when the Naga political solution is to be arrived, mm. what is your. What is your Reading. I mean, what do you read from your colleagues? Are they ready to step down and pave way for this, or you know? You see, is as far as that uh, question is concerned, mm. uh, there is no two opinion. Okay. There is one only one opinion. Yes, all of us should be ready to step down. Okay. And I, I, I suppose uh, the government is also ready. Because the CM himself have stated in one of the interview mm-hmm. that if an honorable solution comes, we should not stand on the way. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, that part uh, there should be no uh, you know doubt, doubt uh, in our mind that any time we are ready and we should be ready also mm-hmm. as a legislator. If there is an honorable solution, why should we stand on the way? Mm-hmm. We should be ready because every political parties, whenever we go to the electorates. You know, all of us write manifesto and yeah. you will find yeah. the first, second, third point will be solving the Naga political issue. Yeah. Okay. So it is a part of the manifesto of every political party. Mm, in Nagaland. Not only Nagaland, even national parties mm. for the state of Nagaland, for the, the okay, uh, okay, for they, every they state. used to insert that portion <laughs> in their manifesto. So it is not only the regional party, but okay. even national parties, okay. they talk emphasis more on, on resolving Naga political issue. Mm-hmm. And therefore, this, this should not be, you know, uh, I mean, it should not be a hurdle for the Naga mm-hmm. people and for elected members also that we should be ready. Mm-hmm. If there is such an honorable solution mm-hmm. uh, to be arrived, arriving at, then uh, we should be ready to pay for it. Mm. And I don't think you are pri- privy to the information on the current indo naga political talk negotiations. Absolutely, because we are only a yes. facilitator. We are right. not a privy to the talk. Yeah. So, uh, but as uh, as much as uh, as far as you understand, mm. like what you have learned so far, what is the current status of the talk? Well, uh, that <laughs> questions I think uh, I'm not uh, competent to answer. Okay. Because that you 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 must put this question to those who are engaged. In who are new. privy to the talk. Mm-hmm. As I said, uh, we are not a, well, I know, a privy to the talk and True. we are not a part of that. And yeah. We are only a facilitator True. as an elected member mm. because on one hand, we owe allegiance to the Indian constitution, constitution of India as and yeah. when we contest. Yeah. But at the same time, this, the Naga rights, as far as Naga political rights, historical rights is concerned, mm. these were established prior to even India becoming an independent. Yeah. And therefore, we have every right to talk even if we have we, when we have been elected, even if we are a part of the political uh, system of India. Mm-hmm. I mean, logically. Correct. Very true. Mm-hmm. So, I think, yeah, we have touched a lot of, a, a plethora of issues. So, thank you so much. And I look forward to, Welcome. you know, mm-hmm. seeing such ray of hope in the days to come, in at least in the Naga areas or in Nagaland or wherever Nagas live as a Naga representative. So, thank you for having that understanding on, on the issue. Thank you so much and for your time as well. I welcome, wish you best. Welcome. welcome. It's, a, it's a nice talking to you. Thank Same you. here. Thank you.